Hello everyone, Brock Trotter with PIMI Consulting, and today I'm going to teach you how to operate the API 653 reporting workbook developed by PIMI Consulting. Now the first step is to open the workbook, and you're going to see this tank descriptions input page. Here we enter information such as tank number, owner, location, the design standard to which the tank was built, the specific gravity of the fluid which it stores, as well as things such as cathodic protection, whether it's a breakout tank, and of course dimensional things such as diameter, height, design liquid level, as well as uh, dates, information that's very pertinent towards the corrosion rates and things like that we input in this section. As well we have coatings for internal coatings, and also roof information. Here we have a color scheme developed for the entire spreadsheet where blue cells represent primary user inputs. These are cells that need to be entered in order for the rest of the spreadsheet to propagate and provide accurate information throughout the entirety of the workbook. Yellow cells represent calculation cells, things where a calculation is taking place and you will not input or edit the formula that's within that cell. Station within compliance is green. This shows that whatever we're looking at is perfectly within the uh, boundaries of API 653 and the tank's perfectly uh, safe for continued operation. This dark gray color represents a title where we describe something. The red represents a review. This means that some sort of calculation or limiting factor by API 653 was not met with the tank. So for example, if your deflection of the tank bottom is beyond the allowable deflection, it would populate in this red color, signifying to the user that there is some issue going on within the spreadsheet. And lastly, we have white, which just represents some sort of description where we've put up some sort of a text value. Now after you've operated the tank descriptions tab, you're able to move on to the B2.2 cosine regression tab. Here we see the opportunity for a user to place different elevations about however many stations there are for a specific tank bottom settlement analysis. Uh, this spreadsheet is capable of going up to thousands and thousands of points as you can see, and it assumes that the space, the stations are spread equally about the perimeter of the tank. Here we see calculation cells, so this took the information I provided for the diameter and calculated the radius. Here the shell height was propagated from the prior description page. Here I enter the material type for the steel that the bottom was constructed of, and as well I identify the zero degree landmark for uh, where I began my station counting. Here we see calculations for the out-of-plane settlement, deflection, and permissibility by API 653B.3.2.1. Here we see the, station, the spacing about the different stations, as well the maximum allowable deflection for this tank. Here we see the first order fit to the cosine, the second order fit to out-of-plane deflection, and as well the deflection graph which shows us the different stations deflection versus the allowable deflection for that specific tank. So looking at this graph we can easily tell that all these stations are well below the maximum allowable and the tank is safe for continued use. Here we also populate a graphic that shows the perspective rigid tilt of the tank. This shows you your dip and strike in comparison to the perfect plane. You can also change this angle of degrees if you wish and it will change how the perspective rigid tilt appears for the user. If a tank is unable to meet the requirements set by the B2.2 method within the cosine regression, users can always use the alternative method, which is the B3.2.2 alternative settlement method. Here, you're able to select the bottom material type, as well as an initial station of interest and a final station of interest. So for example, we see that there's quite a change between stations 9 and stations 13 over a fairly small amount of area. So we may pick 9 and 13 as our stations. The arc length between those stations is calculated here. We specify the diameter, height, k value, 
y yield strength and elastic strength based from the material types and this calculates the s max based on the equation that's allowable within b322 this method is described in a visual graphic here figure b4 this is snipped out of api 653 and it can help a user to kind of identify different uh, points of interest that they may want to identify and analyze whenever operating the B322 alternative settlement uh, tab. Moving on, we have the B34 edge settlement tab. Here, a user is able to populate all the different measurements taken about uh, a shell bottom when performing an edge settlement analysis and also specify the distance from the perimeter, the shell perimeter which these uh, measurements were taken. And then here you see the allowable based on whether the settlement is uh, in a parallel position to the shell or a perpendicular position to the shell. These have been recreated in Visual Basic and we're capable of reading out the diameter submitted from the tank and then determining whether it's within compliance or not. So for example, we're seeing with this specific set of data and tank we see here, it appears that this point is out of compliance both for perpendicular and parallel settlement. And that point is 1.5 foot from the shell and appears at station 3. One more comment on this. Here we see the populated graphs for both the perpendicular and parallel settlements. Next, moving on, we have the Plumness tab, in which user is able to enter different heights um, along the shell and take X bob, uh, plumb bob measurements and determine whether the tank uh, is within linear compliance. It uh, meets the verticality requirements of uh, 1052 for Plumness within API 653. Here we see the maximum allowable Plumness shall not exceed 1 100th of the total tank height with a maximum of 5 inches. So we can see that this tank meets the requirements of API 653, but here we've also added the plumbness limits of API 65752, and you can see that several points are not within compliance of the 650 requirements. But again, because it's capable of uh, performing within the limitations of API 653, the tank is safe for continued operation. Here we go to the bottom corrosion tab. This calculates the period until next inspection for the bottom plate, annular plate, and critical zone of a tank bottom based on the age of the tank bottom as well as the general age of the tank. We calculate the corrosion rate based on the current thickness and previous measured thickness as well as the age and we're able to calculate when the tank needs to be taken out of service for corrosion. So for example, the API next internal inspection interval for this tank would be 10 years based on the limitations of the age, 47 years, as well as the initial thickness and the now uh, measured thickness values. Moving on, we have the B33 internal bottom bulges calculation. This allows you to determine if a bulge within the tank bottom meets the requirements of B33. Here we see two different primary shapes that exist for bottom bulges, one that's just a regular circle and these are calculated using uh, the general method described here where the depth of the bulge cannot exceed 0.37 times the radius of the bulge. Now things are a little different whenever you have these kidney shaped uh, depressions described here and that's determined by this cell here. You can see number two, check edge settlement criteria, this tank is no longer meeting the bulge requirements specified within figure B10 and so now it's saying that this specific point needs to be checked for edge settlement criteria rather than the bulge criteria described here in B33. Repair of fixed roofs. Uh, first you describe whether the roof is supported, self-supported. You say whether there's a corrosion allowance on the roof. Is it built to have live loads exceeding 25 pound force per foot squared? As well as specifying the minimum thickness of the roof. 
and here we calculate whether it meets the requirements of 9.11 and as well you can find out if it meets the requirements of API 650 section 510.3. Next we have the welded shell minimum thickness tab. This allows us to calculate the minimum thickness for the various courses going up a tank shell. Here we specify the different heights for the courses going up the tank shell and the material type for the various courses as well as the as-built thickness and current test thickness. The allowable stresses are populated from the list of the material strengths and just to uh, all whenever I mention material type uh, throughout this presentation all of them have these drop-down lists that allow you to change the material type of that steel and then all of the strength values yield and allowable stresses will all auto propagate and change for you throughout the spreadsheet. We use all this information to calculate the minimum allowable thickness for the course as well as whether it meets that allowable thickness and the corrosion rate for each individual course. These corrosion rates allow you to determine the maximum inspection interval for the shell and we can see for this tank it would be nine years. It would need to be inspected next in uh, 2028. This populates a graphic for you that shows you where you are along that curve. I can simply go in here and change my parameters. So for example, the x-axis is specific gravity and I change this to 1. It was previously much higher. So now I could say something like 0.5 and 1.5. And here we see that we're operating at a specific gravity of 1. This blue line represents the safe hill height for that tank. The gray represents the shell height and the orange represents the user specified fill height. We're able to simply look at this graphic and determine if our operating point is underneath the safe fill height and underneath the shell height. If both those requirements are met, then this tank is going to be safe for continued operation. Likewise, we've created the exact same sort of spreadsheet but for riveted tanks. The requirements and whatnot for riveted tanks are slightly different, so the calculations are performed a little differently. So if you're using a riveted tank, please, please use uh, this tab and please use section 434 from API 653 to perform the calculations. Likewise, we develop a, a graphic that shows you where you're operating at. So for example, if we were operating this riveted tank, we see that the operating point is above the safe fill height, so this is not a safe operation. We would either have to reduce the specific gravity down below this blue line, or we would have to reduce our liquid level below this blue line in order to have safe operation of the, uh, of the storage tank. Now throughout the spreadsheet, you'll notice I use a lot of drop downs and whatnot. These are all propagated from these locked tables that we see in the back. Uh, this includes table 4.1, 42, 43, 52B, as well as reference information for edge settlement and lists that make the entire spreadsheet operate. After, we, after we've completed all these different tabs, we're able to go to the summary report and review all the different sections of the tank uh, API 653 inspection report, print this out, provide it to a client, or uh, or review any of the individual components as well, take notes on it, and as well you can see that this is all color coded. If everything shows up in green you know that this section, for example, differential shell settlement, well it's meeting all the requirements of differential shell settlement, I know that my bottom plate is safe for continued operation. Likewise, shell corrosion limitations, here I can look at my test thicknesses, my minimum thicknesses, whether they show up green and I'm meeting those minimum requirements, and if I am, then I know the tank is, uh, the shell is safe for continued operation. As well, repaired roof and all the different sections that we've gone over. And this is how you operate the API 653 reporting workbook developed by PIMI Consulting. I'm Brock Trotter, chemical engineer with PIMI Consulting, signing off. And please contact us at www.pimiconsulting.com or reach out to us at brock at pimiconsulting.com for any more information regarding the API 653 reporting workbook or any other tank service needs that you may have. Thank you and have an excellent day.